Hello everyone, hello, hello. It's Wednesday afternoon and we are here to paint. So I hope everyone's having a great day. Everyone's feeling creative and I welcome you guys to watch, ask questions. Today's project is painting is super easy. So say hello when you join in and I'm going to show you step by step very easily how to get started painting. Hello, Yoli. Thank you guys for popping in. Say hello when you pop in. Let me know where you are. I love to see who's watching from furthest away and who's the closest. I am coming to you from Massachusetts. I'm in New England right now. I know you see me um, in different places coming to you, but right now I'm in New England. Hey, Carrie. And it's a little chilly today. Cheryl, hello. Thanks for, for popping in. Um, we had 90 degrees in, in New England last week, and today it's probably in the 50s. It's pretty chilly out there, so I... Um, I'm all bundled up because it's cold here in my studio. In Kentucky, oh cool, in Alabama. Hey Lisa, thanks for watching. Lisa again, and I'm gonna paint a simple painting today. It's one of my most popular paintings. I do a lot of paint nights, a lot of paint classes, online, in person. This is probably one of the first paintings I did years and years ago. It doesn't need a tracer. You can incorporate it into any colors you like. It's super fun. It is a little tree of life. And it's a great uh, painting if you want to jump into painting and you're a little unsure and can I do it and I can't draw and all that. You don't need to. We're going to slap that paint on there. If you teach painting, this is a great painting to um, teach. It's simple. Grown-ups and kids alike love it. Uh, changing up the colors. I just use some primary colors. You can change it up. I've done it in all colors. And you don't need many paints. I try to let you guys know you don't need to have every color under the sun. Don't look down because I have every color under the sun but you really just need your primaries and you can mix most of your colors. So in my classes, I will always tell you how to get the colors if you are mixing, um, but these are pretty simple today. So hello, Peggy. Hey, Tanya. Good, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. I know it's all different time zones for you. It is uh, afternoon, just after lunchtime for me. I know I come to you early in the morning a lot of times and um, it's kind of nice to come in the middle of the day. And I love to watch all the crafters. Did you guys see um, Dashing Willow's Lighthouse? I loved it. I have seen those glass insulators and never thought of anything to make with them. I know know about you guys, but I get so many ideas from Craft Around the Clock. Um, if you are a Tinker's Cart art viewer, please check out the link for Craft Around the Clock in the description. There are people crafting live every day, every 45 minutes. And sometimes I'm not sitting down in my studio and making things along with. Uh, sometimes I'm in my car just listening. It's just such a fun, creative vibe, and it'll get you going in, in so many different directions um, as far as crafting and creating. Oh, you're in Spain. Okay. Yep, you are. I know you're about, yeah, you're like five or six hours ahead of us. So thanks for, thanks for popping in. I'll jump right in and start. But as usual, ask me any questions. I will try to answer them as we go. And if I don't, I will come right back after I'm done and answer them, as well as the replay will be up. So don't worry if you have to leave or you're not painting at the moment. You can come back and watch the replay too. So anyways, I'm going to move my little sample here. I'm just painting on some mixed media paper today. I put a coat of gesso on it. Paint it on canvas board. You can paint it on stretch canvas. You can paint it on a piece of slate, a piece of wood, a piece of fabric, anything at all. Hey, Wendy, that's what's so fun about the acrylic paints. And if we are waiting for some things to dry, I have some pieces I'm working on over here on the side that I'll show you. Hello, Pam. So like I said, this is pretty simple. We're not even gonna put our design on. We're painting that very colorful background first. Then we're just gonna place our tree in the middle and just free form some branches. And I, well, I'm going to tell you as I go along, I'm going to just use a bigger brush. If you have a big flat, a round, uh, I, I love my Filbert hog bristle brushes because of the fact that the bristles are a little stiffer and they really move my paint around. But I want you to get started, so I want you to use just what you have. So I'm going to just start, I'm going to go, I have laid my colors out in my palette as how I'm going to go across the canvas with them. I'm going to work fast enough that I can blend one color into the next. And I'm gonna start with the red, and I'm just gonna go over the left side of the canvas. I use a little bit of a kind of a crisscrossy stroke, you can see. That is because the acrylic paints are translucent, and if I painted it just 
back and forth. I'd have some weird streaky bits if I do this sort of textured background. It sort of just kind of makes it look, blend a little bit. I may do a second coat. It's very, very white on this paper. So I might do a second, quick second coat, but can you see I'm just kind of making like a little bit of an arch almost in red. I'm just going to wipe off my brush. I'm not going to wash it. I'm going right into some orange. I'm going to mix this orange I'm putting on in the red as I go because it's wet and wet and so you get a nice blend. And that's how I'm going to work my way across the canvas or the paper or whatever you're working on. Um, and so I've gone into orange a little bit. I'm going to go into some yellow, but I will wipe my brush off. I'll get the excess paint off and go right into my kind of a goldy orange here. I might go to brighter. And again, this is not something you have to use these exact colors for. You can pick out, you know, four or five of your favorite colors. You could go from dark to light. You could go any way you want. Just blend, cross your canvas, blending one color into the other for your simple background. Don't fret about your background. There's a lot of layers of tree and branches, little kind of spiral designs in the tree. So it's not, do not judge your, your painting by this because it's kind of looking a little messy, but you're gonna go over it with so many layers of, of different elements. So I don't want you to judge your painting at all. When you're finished, step back and then you can take a look. But during the process, it's not always pretty. So we're just gonna keep going. The middle, I go lighter. I'm using kind of an ivory color as opposed to white. Sometimes white is so cold and stark. I love the warmth of the ivory. It's, it's an off-white linen, ivory. This one's called buttermilk, whatever you have. And since I'm going into a bit of a lighter color, I'm going to be aware of wiping off my brush if I start picking up some of the darker tones. And I'm just gonna start and just, you can see how, how nicely blended that is for me because I'm using wet and wet paint. If I did the red, let it dry, go back with my orange, I'll have a harsh edge. So that's why I'm working rather quickly to get a nice blend. I can always pop right back into even the last color I used. If it's not budging and it's dried too much, I just want two bits of color meeting and then I use a dry brush to softly blend. I'm going to go a little more into my ivory now. So I am gonna rinse my brush off a little bit and, but really dry it out and squeeze that water right out. Oh, Susan, first time. And Barbara, too. Welcome. Hey, Barbara in Central Maine. I will be coming to you in the summer from the southern coast of Maine. I have a summer place up in Wells, and that's where I will be in the middle of May um, coming to you from. So let me know. Where are you in Maine? Whereabouts? Oh, Wendy, I only put gesso on because I'm painting on paper and the paper just absorbs the paint so much I don't usually get to blend very well. So if I'm on canvas or any other surface, unless it's like a driftwood or something that's dry and going to absorb my paint, I put gesso on only because I'm on paper here. And I'm painting, in, this is just a, a quick way for me to do some demos in the book and then I have the pages to look at for ideas. So here we are with our middle. I'm going to start going into some blue. I may brighten it up a tiny bit with some white here. I just didn't want to do the whole thing white. It was just too harsh, but I'm going to get a little white here. And like I said, any color you choose. Pick out your favorite palette. I want this edge wet, so when I start with the blue, it'll start to blend. Blue and the light are the harshest um, blend we've had so far. It's... Um, you know, just a dark against a light, whereas here we went dark and went into light. So it's gonna require me blending a little bit, but I'm just gonna get that little layer of blue in there. I'm not worried about this edge at all yet. I wanna blend this edge. And even with the gesso, the paint dries a little quick. So I'm just going to soften that line with a harsh line mint. You can kind of see it's a little bit harsh still, and I'm gonna clean off my brush or just grab a clean brush and you can start blending that to make it even a softer blend. So I'm taking the same ivory color on my brush, maybe start in a little bit and go out towards that. And again, we don't have to have the perfect blend. Our tree's gonna be covering all this. This is just a little bit of color in the background. I think it would be cool in shades of teal, just instead of all multicolored. You could go brighter and do rainbow uh, color more than the, um, these are a little softer. And 
just pick out like four colors, five colors you like. Hey, Brenda. Thanks for walking. Vienna, Maine, 25. Oh, okay. All right. I know where you are. Um, we were just talking to a girlfriend yesterday whose mother lives up that way in Augusta, actually. So I'm going to just get a little more blue now because that's dried. I'm getting a little bit more blue. And I'm going to blend into some green. You could go into a purple. You could make these little areas as wide or as thin as you like. I do tend to curve them a little bit. I don't know why. I just seem to like that. And I thought this would be a good project. You've seen me do very detailed projects, very simple projects, painting on all sorts of things. But this is a good one. If you think, oh, I might want to paint. I, I, I'd like to paint, but you know, I don't have all the things or I can't draw or, you know, I wasn't born with that, that artistic gene. All not true. A few, pro, a few um, supplies. You don't need a lot. You don't have to worry about tracing this one on or drawing it. You can kind of go free form and it's a good way to jump into painting. I would love to see if you have that little bit of a desire to really just go in ahead and try because really I teach you in a really step-by-step -step manner. So it, it's easy to follow. I love this blue green when I've got my, I've got like kind of a phthalo green there. It makes a beautiful teal. I could get a little more emerald if I wanted, just by adding some yellow, but I really kind of look like the look of that teal. So I'm gonna just kind of mix the blue and that green, get that really cool teal color. Not something I did on my sample, but this is the whole serendipity thing about it, painting. Without trying, you're going to discover some new techniques, some new things that you like. I'm just giving a little blue into that green to sort of blend. And yes, my background is a little bit um, see-through, but I like the texture it gives me, so I'm leaving it. If you really wanted a nice solid background, now that it's dry on this side, you can start and go again or the other way. Peggy, thank you. I think the colors are bright and happy and cheerful. When we add the tree on top and all the little details, then it will subdue it a tiny bit, but still um, be, be pretty. Oh, good morning, Sue. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Tar Tarita, let me take a look, because I have so much writing on my screen there that I see what you say. So let me move some things here so you guys can see better. And let's see, let me pull myself up here, and that's probably a little better. Let's move some of these things aside. And please always tell me if there's something you can't see or if I can shift something on my end to make it a little more visible for you. I hope that's a little better, but let me know. Um, okay, so when I'm doing this on my canvas, I let this dry. It's paper it's drying pretty quick. Sometimes I jump right in if, and I'm, but when I'm feeling brave and I just sketch my tree on with a Sharpie. I can always use, also use a piece of chalk because chalk is easily erased. So I will go in with a little piece of chalk here and all I do, like I said, you don't need to trace. All I do is find close to the center as I can. So I got the center and I'm just getting a line. That's a little difficult to see. So let me do a pencil. I just want a line down the middle of my canvas just to start. That's where my tree is going to, the trunk's going to go. And from there, my goal is to just, and I just freehand these, but I just make big kind of curly branches. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of fill up the shape of the canvas with those. So for now, I'm just gonna get that little trunk on there. I'm gonna use my black paint here for that. I've got a messy table here, but I'll put the paint colors there for a moment. And I'm just gonna go into black. You can use a, a round brush, a flat brush. You can use whatever you want. I'm just gonna use a flat. I love the flat brushes because I can get a wide stroke of paint with that brush, but I can also get a thin line with it on the chisel edge. I'm gonna thin my paint a little bit perhaps because I put it out a little while ago. I'd rather have you painting detailed bits like this with paint that is more ink-like consistency than a heavy paint. I also like to add some blue. I, I never want to use straight black for anything. I like my paints gray or a blue black. So I'm putting some blue into that black. And I'm just gonna get an idea where my trunk is. And I'm not gonna have a straight stick of a tree there, but that gets the trunk there for me. And then I would make it a little wider and I do bring it out a little on the bottom. 
And that is just super simple, just a start. It's a black, but with a blue tint to it. And I believe I'm going to actually go to a little smaller square because I don't want my branches to be that thin. So I'm going to just go for a little, another square brush, just a little smaller. Again, I keep adding a little bit of water, so you can see my palette, but a little bit of water to my paint, just to have it a little thinner. And now I just start making my branches. And it really is just, and again, you could draw this in with pencil chalk or, or even a marker first. But I'm just giving myself these curly branches and you can make as many little curly branches off there as you like. And my goal is to sort of just fill up that bit. So I can go and do just, you can even do them. This is very light that I'm doing it, very watery, but that's kind of a nice way to start because I can go back a little heavier paint if I want. That side's easier to see because we have that light side. And by thinning the paint, I'm getting a nice long stroke without having to stop and start. The, br the, the branches get a little heavier towards the trunk. I can always go back and make them a little heavier. And like I said, I'm just kind of going out to the edges and making a little place for these guys. You could go as curly cue as you want. You could use a round brush if that was easier for you. And again, I just make them a little heavier when they come in to meet the tree. The top here, I kind of just break off and make some curly cues as well. I make whatever I can with the bigger brush. But you can go back with a thinner brush too and I'll show you that. Like if you wanted to go just with a little liner brush and some people's trees, it's amazing to see how the trees come out so different. Some people are very thin and just detail with little thin lines. Some are heavier than this. It's whatever you want. So I sometimes go now with a smaller brush. And again, you could make as many little curls off of these as you wish. Some of them you can make really curled in, really kind of fun like that. It's a little bit like a, a, like a tree you might have seen in Nightmare Before Christmas, or it's just kind of a cool tree. You could make a Halloween tree. I've done this tree before and then put pumpkins hanging off of it for Halloween. And simple, simple. It's good brush stroke practice too. And like I said, the strokes don't come up perfect. You've got a lot of little, putting these little spirals on top so it's a good way to just practice and still come out with a really cool painting. I've had people paint lots of these for gifts. Everyone seems to love how bright and colorful they are. You can put it on any size. I've done it at 16 by 20 canvas, which is a bit large. You could do it at um, a little eight by 10 to put like on a small area on the wall or on your desk or... So without being too detailed, you can just, like I said, go and do as many of these as you would like. And I think I have plenty on there. And I can see my chalk lines. We're not even going to worry about that. Those, when the paint is dry, will erase just with a wet brush or even our finger. And uh, so that's where we're at already. So we get a background from one side to the other with some pretty colors. And you can see how I sort of curved it a little bit so it's not straight lined. It's kind of curved. And I'm looking at it now, and it's funny when you look at your painting in, in the video, it looks very heavy here. So I'm going to make my trunk a little heavier towards the bottom. And it just looked a little top heavy. So let me just go in and make that a little thicker. And then I just give a little texture to the bark. Not a lot. I'm going to just use the same brush, dry it off. I'm going to do with a light blue. So I'll take a little blue, white to my blue. And now I'm going to have that brush on the chisel edge. And I'm just going to kind of run down, give it a little bit of like a bark texture. I don't have to go too far out on all the little curly cues. But you'll see how nice a blue highlight will look rather than 
just white and black, which would give you kind of a dull gray. <clears throat> if I'm painting pet portraits and I'm doing black fur, I will use light blue to highlight. If I'm doing any sort of an element that, you know, I'm using a lot of black, I will highlight with a light blue. I just like colorful, whimsical, vibrant paintings. I'm taking a little liner brush with the, that light blue now and just throwing it in here and there, especially on the dark side where we sort of lose a little bit of our branches. But I like that way. I like it where it's subtle in places and it stands out a little more in others. And it could be even a lighter light blue. And you know what's nice too? When this is dry and you're dragging kind of a, a bit of paint over and you get that texture, that dry brush texture is kind of nice. I'll show you up close what that looks like. So it's just a little bit of texture there, but with light blue, I've done it with the chisel edge of my flat brush. I've also thrown some on there with my little detail brush as well. Okay, oh good, that's better. Okay, Wendy. Oh, Barbara, I do love the old saws painted and whatnot. I have a couple here. Uh, some are just wood cutouts that look like the saw and some of the old saw blades. And that is a lot of fun to paint on those scenes. I'm painting right now. I'll, I'll let this dry a minute and I'll show you. You might have seen, you might have seen my, my milk can that I painted with like a little scene on there, which I left the, black, the back blank because I want to do a winter scene of the same scene maybe on the bottom. Hey, Tara. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, but today I was painting, and you might have seen the little old oil can, which everybody thought from the picture when it was like this was a plunger but it's got a little ocean scene. We've got whales and a lighthouse and a narwhal, of course, because I love narwhals, and a mermaid and dolphins and all the things on a little tiny oil can. So after everyone thought that was a plunger, I thought, let me get, I, thought I bought some of these little um, other oil kind of can things. So that's why I've been painting today. I've been painting this one. Uh, I did it for my membership. I have an art membership, and we're doing the Whimsical Landscapes as one of the classes this month. So this was the recording, and I'm just sort of going in and, and touching it up now. So it's just an old tin piece I primed with just a spray primer, and then I paint these little Whimsical Landscapes. Pretty simple. I just, you know, I showed my group how, you know, you start with the sky, put some little hills in, get the background done, and then just place tiny houses and barns and churches and sheep and whatever. But they're not detailed, so you don't have to be worried about it doesn't look like a sheep. It's really a little blob of white. Reads as a sheep. So they are really fun to to paint on. But I, I love seeing old things that people rework, especially on, a, on our Craft Around the Clock page here. Hey, Michelle and Connie, welcome for the first time. Thank you, guys. I do want to let you know in the description there is a link if you would like at all to. Um, I would love it if you follow and like my uh, Facebook presence here. But I also have a private network over on Mighty Networks, which is nice. It's very similar. has the has the discussion feed and the community aspect, and but it's very private and there's not ads and and all the other things. Link to that is in the description. I would love it if you joined me there. That's where my free group is, and I also have a paid art membership, which we paint four times together a month. And so you can always find information about that on my pages or by sending me a message. So anyway, let's do the next step. So first step was the background. Second step, we did our tree. I can get rid of these little chalk lines now. That paint is dry. And I just, um, I did smudge my paint here a little bit, but it's so easy to fix with just a little paintbrush with some water on it. Um, I just didn't know what to put on here. So what I did is I made these little spirals that are so simple that people love to paint them. They come out looking a little like roses. Um, this is how I would almost paint little folk art roses sometime. But I just take whatever colors out. So I've got all the colors, way too many. I took way too much paint. I don't know why I thought I was painting a mural today. But so any colors you have, I start by taking, let's just for instance, start with this dark purple. Now, when you've got a darker color on the dark side, it's not going to show up as much, but still go ahead and make them because when we put a little white highlight on them, they start to show up. So I just simply, let me just tip so you can really see what I'm doing. I simply just pat my brush down and make a little spiral. So I'm not making a perfect circle. I'm not trying to make the ends meet. It's poking it down and spiraling it out, and it doesn't have to be, you know, fancy at all. The trick is, is I want to do as many as I can while it's still wet, I want to put a little white highlight on it 
So I will not go across my whole painting. I will do a section of these at a time. Just dry my brush off on the paper on a paper towel, and then I'm just dipping into the white paint, plopping it right in the middle of what I've done, and spiraling it out. And I like the way it looks when it kind of really spirals out right around itself. It's a little decorative touch. It's not uh, meant to be anything in particular. It's just a way to bring in a lot of fun colors. And I will do this with all colors, whatever's on my palette, whatever I want to, and that's what I use. Um, how I do those. So I would go ahead then now, I kind of put a lot of purple in one spot. You might want to spread that out. But I just do as many as I can. And then you'll notice, you might be able to do a half a dozen. You might be able to do, if the, if, it, if the conditions are right and your paint's not drying fast, you could do a bunch. But I just go on, plunk the brush down, spiral it out. I use that technique to make a lot of moon, sun, round things because I don't want to try to make them perfect. So if I take it and do that circle, kind of like, maybe you see it better on here. So I just poke the brush down, spiral it out, and see how I let it get really like light on the edges almost? It kind of fray, it softens as it gets a little wider. So I'm going to get some white highlights, just, just dipping in white, poking it on there, and just reloading for each one. Sometimes I could get two. And you could let the, and if it dried, it's not a big deal. It would just be that you'd have a very harsh white line on top of your little circle. I like the look of the paint mixing a little bit with the color I painted. There's no right or wrong though, you guys. Hey, Lisa Marie, how are you? You must still be in Destin, are you? Oh, you're, le you're leaving today, maybe. I hope you guys had a nice vacation. See, that one there came out very white because the, the purple had dried already. So I'm gonna throw a few more purple on this side. And then I'll start, and what I'm gonna do is just dip in any color I have. I'm gonna do fairly quickly. So I might be able to do quite a few. If you want, you can do all the colors like I am. If you would rather, you could do just a couple colors, depending on what kind of a little color palette you want and theme for your whole painting. And can you do that also with that? paint. I'm not familiar with echo line paint, but I think you could do it with any paint at all. I'm just using in my acrylics. Uh, you could use any brands, and I know when I've done murals and things, I've used more of like the uh, house paints, really. Uh, I, it would The technique would work, I think, with anything, but I'm not sure what they are. Let me know what those paints are. Oh, Cecile from Canada, thank you for watching. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I'm so excited even for next month because now I have other designs. My mind um, goes a little ahead of me, and I have so many things I want to paint, as we all do. So in the membership, I give pretty much like uh, four things. We paint together uh, by Zoom twice a month, and then we also, I'm going to just go ahead and go into some of my other colors now. And then I have two recorded paintings a month, and I know that sounds like a lot, but it's not because of quantity, it's so that you can pick what you like. If you like to paint landscapes, you can pick out the landscapes. If you'd rather paint animals, you can pick out the animals. We do still life, whimsical things. Sometimes we just get together and practice our brush strokes. Uh, but I don't want people to feel overwhelmed that it's a lot of content, and I know it is, but it's always there, it's always recorded, and you pick out what you like to paint or what you feel like painting that month. All of the, I've been doing it for about two years now, so when you do join, you get all of the content that we have done over the last couple of years, so there's plenty in there. Plenty for everyone. So you can see how you don't even see the little orange bits over here, but when you go and do your white highlight, you do. So that's kind of cool. And I just look at the painting as I'm going. Like right now I'm saying, you know what? I think I want to brighten up some of these little stripes on the tree, the little texture for the bark. I would go back and I'm going to just brighten that up a little bit too. Oh, and you know what? I know I always say this, but I want you to realize when you, when you think you don't have time to paint, I really want to paint, but I just don't have time. Look at all of the creators on Craft Around the Clock every day, day after day, how much they're creating in a 45 minute segment. So it doesn't take, you don't need to set aside hours to, to paint. 
set aside a little while. You don't have to finish, of course, but if you set aside maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes and you sit down, you're going to be so surprised by what you can get done, really. And it just kind of inspires you and it makes it easier to come back and sit down and do it again. And the more you do that, number one, the more you do that and you enjoy it, you're going to come back and make time for it. And also, the more you do it, you, the more you're going to improve. So it's a win-win. Is every painting or, or creative project going to come out wonderful? No, but when something doesn't come out right, what is it? It's a, it's a learning experience or it's an experiment or you've figured out a way to do it better or, you know, just, there's not time wasted. It doesn't have to always be about what you come out with. It's really about the process. It's the process where the joy is. All right, so I'm putting some of the goldy yellow on here now. And I'm gonna do the same thing as usual, just take that uh, little brush, dip it into the white and spiral it. And like I said, I like some that are subtle and then some really jump out at you. It's a nice mix. Oh, thanks Mary Jane. Hi Mary. Oh, Echo is more liquid. Oh, you know what, Tanya, that would be fine. I, I know what I love lately is using the uh, golden fluids, which are a very liquid acrylic, but they're very concentrated with pigment. So even though they're fluid, um, I'm looking at the computer like you can see me over there talking, uh, they cover well, and they've been really fun to work with. And I like working on those on a smoother surface a lot of times, so I'll use the wood panels then. But yeah, try whatever you have. I think that would be terrific. And I'd love to see it. If you guys paint this or are inspired or paint whatever you paint, you're welcome to share on my page. I would love to see what you're doing. The community would love to see what you're doing. It's a fabulous community, encouraging and there for you. So please jump in and share your paintings. And I will mix sometimes some of the colors. This is just kind of a pinky purple that I happen to have on my palette because I just love this color. It's similar to the purple we use, but we'll put a few on there. Okay, we'll put one there, we'll go back in our white. Can you see how you, this is pretty free form, it's pretty interpretive, you could do however you like, but you're not, you know, you're not having to stick in, in you know, the inside of tracer and do it just so. It's really fun, it's a nice exercise to just like paint and throw the paint on and have fun. It's a design kids love. I've done Girl Scout troops and uh, after school groups with younger people and they love this painting. Of course, they add butterflies and princesses and and all the things, which I love to see all the elements that the, that the kids just put in there. Hey, Deborah. Thank you, guys. Okay, what are the colors? Maybe some red. Oh, I forgot one little spiral there. And what have I done? I've done, I've done oranges. I've done quite a few colors here. I'm going to do a few red, and uh, then we will... I put some little leaves on there. Just If you know me, you know I can't leave well enough alone. It's done. It looks like it's done. It could be done, and I go ahead and just have to add another little tiny element, another little detail. It doesn't have to be. You have your own style. You could be very simplified. You could be adding on as many crazy elements as I do. And that's what's great, and that's what makes the world go round, is that we're all a little different. We have a little different take on every painting. I really encourage people to not worry about copying the painting, having it just like the instructor, their neighbors, this one, my painting doesn't look like yours. It's not supposed to. We don't want that. It's not what we're striving for. We're not striving for our paintings to look like photographs either. You just have fun with it and you develop your own style and you'll be much happier than continuously trying to compare to someone else's painting. Because I can tell you, I've painted this painting probably a half a dozen times and it's not one that looks like the other. And I wouldn't want that to be the case. Same with photographs. I know when I started painting, that was the, the biggest compliment I could get. Oh, that's wonderful. It looks just like a photograph. And I, that's what I strive for. That's what I thought it was, should be. I would copy, the, you know, I'd look at my reference and it would be every little stroke and detail. And if there's a window and it had a cat in it and then it was at a curtain and I had to paint all, it, it was, it was uh, tiring. And then when I started painting more just intuitively or not even just intuitively, just looser 
and having fun with it and not worrying about what it's going to look like, I developed a style and it's a style that I embrace and love because I don't, I want to use color. I want to use, have fun with it. So let's just enjoy it. And, and if you're, you know, if you have, like I said, paintings that come out and they're not what you wanted, if you had fun while you were sitting there throwing that paint around, that's what counts. Okay, so I'm gonna do, that's enough, I think, of all these little spirally bits. So that's just what they look like. Just a little fun. I do throw little leaves on there. I don't know why, but I do. And I'm just gonna use a little flat brush and I'm going to sh I'll show you how simple little leaves can be. Let me get actually some leaf colors out. And again, we could mix them so easily, actually, just to show you how easy, and I'm being putting out the color, but just the phthalo green and this yellow, you get, can get all sorts of shades of gorgeous greens. Add a little white, you get like kind of a sour apple look. So you really don't need a lot of paint. I don't really need to paint a lot um, different greens. I usually do just lighter greens and darker greens on this. Oh, and, and simply with just a little flat brush, I'm just pressing and making a little leaf shape. These aren't fancy leaves, they're just little shapes. One stroke, just pop them in wherever you want. And these are a bit of a light green. I might go on with a very dark green, maybe the phthalo green straight. I'm not thinking about where they go. I'm just, if there's an empty space, I just put it in. Sometimes I curve them a little bit. And if I make this a little lighter, it will show up better on that. A little white always adds a little, a little bit of body to your paint, makes it a little more opaque. So if I'm on the dark here and they're not showing up, but I want some dark, but if they're not showing up and I want some light ones, little white and with whatever color is not heavy enough for you, just pop that in. It can go over the branches. It can go over the flower a little bit. I'm not trying to place them, like I say, in particular spaces. I'm just going to go and just add in one more element. And then depending on if I pick up a lot of the yellow with it, I get a lighter green. Or if I pick up less, I could have a darker green. I can go right into my phthalo. I do love that green. It's really a blue-green, but it's really a nice shade. And I'll just throw some dark in there. So the dark ones are showing up nicely on the light side. The light ones show up over here. It just makes a nice pattern uh, to the painting. It you know, it's some colorful elements. Your eye kind of follows some of these bright spots around. I do want to make sure I get some on the branches because I think that is a nice touch to break them up a little bit so they're not all just all branch. Alrighty, now, I did, wanna, I did want to lighten up some of these little strokes in the trunk that are bark-like. So I'm going to take a little blue, light blue, and I'm going to have a little finer brush this time, so I may make, you know, a little bit more detail. And I'm going to hold that up so you can see it, because I know. But if I have dark, and then I have the blue that I put on, that's a little bit darker. And now I go back with more white in my brush, and, and so I have almost three shades. It, it really is kind of nice to have the dark middle and light shades. And I might go over here to my little branches a little bit. Maybe just put a little bit of a lighter highlight on those here and there. I'm not doing every one. And if there's any questions, I know we have plenty of time. Um, please, I can always answer them. Oh yeah, I will show a close up, Lisa, and I'll take up some, I'll take some photos of it closer up too, uh, of the originals too. Um, because those were, you know, didn't, I didn't do them as quickly, so they might have a little better detail for you. And if you ever need anything like that after a recording and you think of like, if it is something that has a tracer and you want one, just send me a message anytime and I'll get that whatever you need for you. So don't worry about any of those little details. If you have trouble while you're painting, you're stuck on something, send me a message. I, I check them pretty often. I'm there to help you along. And I know I've got some very dark branches here, so I'm just a little stroke of the lighter blue on there. I won't go as bright as white, but a light blue. And 
Let me put that up closer for you so you can kind of see the little bluish lines. You can see my little leaves, they're just kind of floating. And if you want to go back in any of the white spirals on those little colored balls, and you want a few a little brighter, nothing says you can't go back in on some with just stronger white and just a few highlights there. Um, mine are showing up pretty well, so I don't think I need that. But you can always go back on some that are a little darker. Seems to me sometimes the paint just, um, when it dries, seems to sink into the background a little bit. Now, that could be it if you wanted. I, of course, go one step further. <laughs> um, I just make some light spiral designs in the back. I love the spiral design. Such a natural, beautiful uh, element. I don't want to make them bright. I want them to be subtle, just barely there. So I just take whatever color I was going on to. So say I'm going on to the red over here. I'm going to take my red here. And again, I'm thinning my paint now because I'm making little spirals. I want them a little watery. I don't want them to really show up. And let's see, I want just a little lighter shade of, of, of what I'm doing here. So I might just take a little tip of that, take a little bit of that ivory color. And then I'm going to see if it'll work. Let's see. It's, it, if you can see it, I'm going to hold it up, but it's very light. It just is almost giving texture, covering up any of those little uh, see-through bits that I've had there. And let's see, I know it's very light. Let's see if the camera picks it up. I think it does. Can you see these little spirals here? Whoops, as I just smushed this one. Um, just a lighter shade of whatever color is down for the background. And it just, like I said, it, I think I originally did it because it was bothering me that my paint was streaky. And this really was kind of cool. And, and if I'm losing it, I'll just add a little more of the ivory just so it's just a shade lighter. And then I'll go and do the same with the orange and the yellows. I'll use white on top of where the ivory went. It's mostly around the edge of the tree. You don't have to get into the middle unless there's a big space. You don't have to really worry about that. So I'll take a yellow now, and I'm going to mix that with a little white just to lighten it. Add a little water because I want it to be thin. And just this stands out a little more, so let me hold that up again for you. You see the yellow little spirals there. So I do that, like I said, just where you can see it. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. I'll start with some white now into that ivory with a little white. Again, thinning it down a little bit. My white is pretty contaminated with all the other colors, but it will be fine. So I'll throw some of those on. And I'll just work my way around doing that sort of little background. And it is a pretty quick painting. Now look at we've not even been going for the full 45 minutes. We've got like two minutes left. And we've created a whole painting there. So I'm going to go, I don't know where the time flies, doesn't it, when we're painting? Doesn't it fly? I, I thought at first I had um, lots of time left, but that little, some of these blue ones are coming out a little bit brighter than I'd like. And then that teal, which I love, the teal. We'll lighten that up a little bit with some white. A little blue, make it more teal. Let's see. And there's more space here, of course. And like I said, some people go into a purple instead. I like the little teal color, really. I will erase my chalk lines. Now, let me just, this little guy is just a little too bright for me, so I'm just going to take him off and make that a little bit better. That's the other thing about acrylics, which is fabulous. You can paint right over things you don't like. If you don't like the whole painting, you could paint it right over. So I don't want you to hesitate or worry about you know being yourself and painting what you think you want to paint because just do it without any fear because you can paint it over there we've got a whole minute left thank you guys for watching but can you see now just how that kind of hides the uh brush stroke showing and whatnot 
Yeah, Michelle, I always have to add a little extra. Um, oh, good, Susan, you see the lighter color. It is a lot of fun. Oh, Mary, of course. Um, it's posted, of course, um, on Care After on the Clock. I'll post it here. I'll post it. It'll be on my page. It will stay. And then I always download my videos, you guys, to YouTube. So if you want to follow Tinker's Cart Art on YouTube, lots of lo longer and shorter classes there, free classes, if you want to take a look. So thank you all again for painting with me, and I will see you next time. Have a great afternoon. Bye now.